to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, welcome back, Y5, to yet another underground episode of The Wildest Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, if you haven't already, for whatever reason, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. <laughs> And while you're there, click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. Today, after I got off work, I happened to be sent with my son. And for some odd reason, he was watching a compilation video of Karen's versus kids. Listen, to know my nine-year-old is to love him. He is a very interesting character and I'll give you a little <laughs> side note the other day we were playing in the car and he said ma I want to play a game with you where I guess your character he said pick a character and I'm going to ask you questions until I can guess your character and I was like okay you know cool whatever and so I got a character in my mind because at first I wasn't sure if he meant like a letter or a number but he meant like an actual character and so he asked me the most oddly specific questions like these gen alpha kids they're smith agents sent from the future uh i don't know who sent these kids but he starts asking me the most specific questions that anyone has ever asked me to be quite honest he said does your character have any association to japanese mythology I'm like no he was like, is your character currently under the influence of the rings of power? Like, no, <laughs> he was asking me some of the most on point questions ever. So the fact that he's sitting here watching a compilation video of Karen's versus kids is, yeah, but as I'm watching these videos, several things occurred to me, and I think it bears an episode. Here's another Karen insulting my daughter. Coming out here, my daughter's been coming here watering plants for three weeks while they're out of town. You don't know them. You insulted my child. We live in the neighborhood. Karen, welcome to the internet, Karen. You got little girls crying. Welcome to the internet, Karen. The new Karen. Welcome to the neighborhood, Karen. I need a name. Uplift here. You don't need a name. You need to get away. You need to go somewhere. If you don't know, you need to go somewhere, Karen. Out here making little girls cry for watering plants at a friend of ours' house, and you're the new. I'm increasingly seeing things like this. These videos of these men particularly black men, occasionally black women as well, but particularly black men going in on white women for being in certain neighborhoods and being racially profiled. One of the higher profile cases was Terrell Owens being in his own neighborhood and having a woman, you know, feel threatened by him. But here's the thing. When we as black people get money, and move up in the world when we cross over the threshold and we get out of the hood these are the neighborhoods that we want to move into and why this was particularly of interest to me is because I used to be a 911 operator and when I worked on 911 we would have all of these white people that would move into areas of Charlotte that had been historically predominantly black neighborhoods and they would buy these homes and gentrify the hood and then they would spend all of their time calling us to complain and those were white people that were loitering around their homes and there would be times where the officers would come out and they would explain to these people like hey this you know uh, that's jazzy 
And he's he's been in this area for the last 30 or 40 years. You know, this used to be his mom's house. And sometimes, you know, if he's drunk or something like that, he may meander back into the neighborhood. He might knock on your door. You know, he's he's got cognitive decline. And for that reason, sometimes he thinks this is his home. You know, they would explain this. <laughs> you are disturbing the natural habitat of this neighborhood <laughs> and you have to understand that calling us every 10 minutes isn't going to change your neighborhood isn't going to change the environment so i say this black people if you're gonna move on up to the east side we finally got a piece of the pie. you are in the natural habitat of a certain group of people and just as the prophet Fred Hampton said, we cannot defeat white capitalism with black capitalism. This was what the dream, the dream of black people was supposed to be. I mean, we had our own communities. We had our own neighborhoods. We burn them to the ground during riots. We disenfranchise them when we get money. Whatever we've done with our community, that has been our choice and our ability to do it. But now, now that you're crossing over into territory that belongs to other people, being outraged doesn't change the environment. And what I found weird about the videos was I kept asking myself this question, who are these videos made for? I mean, because if we're, if we're making them for black people, black people already know this. We already know what it's like to live in black skin. We've been followed, we've been profiled, we've been wrongly accused. We already know. So these videos can't be made for us. And if these videos are made for white people, why would you move out there with them? I, I, I've heard people say, you know, we're recording these videos for our protection. But our protection from whom and, and by whom? Who are you calling? <laughs> because I don't care how much evidence you have. When the police get out there to decipher what has happened, your huge amount of outrage at the Karen phenomenon, especially, I mean, I'm looking at what I'm looking at on these videos and I can't tell who the aggressor is at a certain point. So I want to offer this piece of advice. Do what the great integrationist Martin Luther King taught you. And endure, endure the hard fight as a good soldier. Yeah, integration was won for us by the silent complicity of sitting at these lunch counters, getting milk poured on you in a suit. I mean, Sunday's best dressed, clean. What do they call it? Respectability politics? You came in there looking respectful, expecting to be respected. And instead you got spit on. You got hot coffee poured on you. So yeah, if you're going to be out in Karen's community, endure. Quietly. Like the guest that you are. If you're not going to come back out of suburbia, because let's be honest, they gentrify in the inner city. So most of us have been run out of the up um, the the epicenter of the cities. They want that back. So if you're going to live out in suburbia with the whites that are left, well, if that's your choice <clears throat> over building safe, productive upwardly mobile communities for your own people to dwell in. I mean, I've seen it in several settings. There would be affluent neighborhoods in South Charlotte that, I mean, every home you went to, it was nothing but Indians. I've, I've seen the phenomenon where groups of people will live together under one roof and then get together and go out and buy a, a whole block of houses. So that they can live there with their children growing up together, with their families that they brought over from these other countries. So it can be done. But if you don't want that, 
if you're not going to come back into communities after you get money and build them back up and create spaces for other children that look like your children to come up and grow up together and have a sense of racial, cultural, and black national pride, well, endure. Endure these Karens. Endure these Karens calling the police on your children. <laughs> you know, endure these Karens, these and it's the weirdest thing because they're so fit, feminine, and friendly. It's weird to think of them being the agitator, the aggressor. You know, I mean, this is based on what has been characterized and said of them, not just from white America, but from black men as well. These are the women that we should all aspire to be like. So it's a weird phenomenon to watch the black outrage about how they are when it comes to protecting their community, when it comes to defending their community that you happen to be in, that they feel threatened by you there. It's, I don't know. So you can weigh in in the comments and tell me what you think. Um, you know, I put some examples of it in here, and I just I find it just as weird when they call the police on blacks being in black neighborhoods as it is for black people in white neighborhoods to be outraged about the same behavior. I mean, my therapist always says, wherever you go, there you are. And uh, I mean, it's the same behavior, no matter where they take it. But if you're going to live amongst them. They said it's not a game of you niggas money. You don't know how to appreciate it. If you see what I see and you feel as I feel, you know. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire. Headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. Like, maybe I'm off. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Let me know in the comments. But until the next time, you already know the drill class this week. I say it, I say it again, you've been had, you've been took, you've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, let us stray, run amok.